Hello, I'm Elijah Henderson with Cryptid SI and Chasing Night Shadows. While we will certainly bring you an abundance of on-site reports of Sasquatch and Dogman and Werewolf encounters, we will also bring you tales of the supernatural and creatures of all varieties. We will be chasing night shadows of every type and stripe imaginable, and we'll do our best to bring you these accounts and many reports or episodes that we are calling Nightmare Nuggets. Sometimes we may have to make it a longer format if the need arises. Also, in the future, we hope to look at some of history's mysteries that fall within the parameters of the paranormal as well. Frequently, you will hear me talk about my heritage that comes from the mountains of southern Appalachia. The culture there in the mountains and the people who live are so vastly different from any place and any people that you could imagine. To visit, you almost feel that you've stepped backwards in time. Mountain people have their own ways. They are proud people and don't particularly like to share their affairs with the outside world. Throughout Appalachia, there are encounters, occurrences, traditions, and customs that few people ever hear about because of the private natures of the people who live there. We're going to look at one of those traditions today. When you think of witches, what comes to mind? Do you think of the Wizard of Oz, or black hats and warty noses? Or do you think of TV shows like Charmed, Sabrina, or Bewitched? Whatever your perception, our subject today will not fit into one of your preconceived notions. Today we are going to look at the Granny Witches of Appalachia. Growing up, my father had more than a passing familiarity with the individuals of which we were speaking, and he could tell you that mountain magic is as old as the mountains themselves. Not all practitioners of these ancient crafts are the same. Some seem to have inherited their peculiar gifts and talents by right of birth or heritage. Some claim to have been born with power because they were born as the seventh son or daughters, while others were born behind the veil or with a call or thin membrane covering the face or body. Still others are taught the dark gift by others in the family. There are varying degrees of magic that are practiced there in the mountains, ranging from healers to water witchers to those who partake in the foulest forms imaginable. Those who call themselves healers will often heal with the roots and herbs, or actually be able to lay hands on you and heal you from a p particular malady such as thrush, or even miraculously remove warts. Some use a form of German, often called Pennsylvania Dutch magic, called powwow, which is found in a 19th century grimoire called The Long Lost Friend. <clears throat> this type of magic is often carried out through a blending of rituals, sigils, and the scriptures, and most of these practitioners are of a more benevolent nature. Some individuals can do amazing things, like removing the heat out of a severe burn by speaking certain Bible passages to the injury, Others have the ability to stop uncontrolled bleeding by simply reading or citing Ezekiel 16.6 to the person who is wounded. This incredible passage saved one of my own relatives on numerous occasions. Personally, I do not believe that the reading of the Ezekiel passage is a form of witchcraft, but rather an act of faith. Much of the craft that has been practiced throughout the Appalachian mountain range came to America from the Celtic lands, and to some extent co-mingled with Native America magic becoming its own unique brand. While there are a number of individuals who are referred to as granny witches that practice a more compassionate form of mountain magic, there are others yet who are steeped in the most malignant form imaginable, those who bring death and destruction in their path. My family, unfortunately, has first-hand knowledge of these expounders of the dark arts. I, however, will not mention our connection to them, but I will say that they absolutely do exist and are every bit as cruel and terrifying as Granny Haggis from the horror movie Pumpkinhead. I'm not saying that they can actually conjure demonic beasts like Pumpkinhead. I don't know if they can or not. Of course, I can't say that they are unable to do it either. But what I can say is that they most certainly can do great harm to any individual unfortunate to fall on their bad side. Sometimes a person doesn't even have to know the witch who has hexed them. They become a victim because the practitioner of dark magic has been paid to cause them harm, personal injury, or death. Or they can be brought to complete and utter ruin. Many hexes, curses, and spells involve bloodletting, grave dirt, cemeteries, pictures, and even water. Many a person has been killed by untraceable poisons made from crushed insects or herbs and roots that come from the hills and the hollers. One of these mountain witches confessed to my father that she could take human life using the dark arts and the only reason that she did not was because she feared going to hell. Some of these individuals have no fear of suffering the torments of the wicked in hellfire. Rather, they openly embrace Satan and reject Jesus Christ. One rather good friend of the family told us that as a boy he saw his aunt's grimoire. He said that it was an old black book inscribed with the words, Whosoever opens this book 
will sever himself forever from Jesus Christ. Many of those who practice this form of mountain magic have little regard for life and are willing to take it in almost a casual manner. Friends, I'm not here to discuss the morality of magic and its use. I'm simply making a new Nightmare Nugget segment, and I could drag this one out for a, the longest time because of the magnitude of the subject, but I'll keep it brief and close it out by saying, whatever your thoughts and feelings on this particular subject may be, they're between you and your God or you and your conscience. Granny witches, whether they be good or evil, are absolutely real, and I would wager that there are relatively few true mountain witches left, and the old ways are gradually giving way to the new ways, and times are changing. As of late, anyone with a computer, a library card, or a way to the local bookstore can find a guide or a book on the topic of witchcraft and claim themselves to be a witch or a Wiccan. But coming from a region where true witchcraft is practiced, I have to say that many of the multitudes who practice the craft because it is trendy are simply dabblers at best. I hope you've enjoyed the episode of Nightmare Nuggets of Supernatural Suspense, and if you like these true accounts in miniature episode form, then please subscribe to our YouTube channels, Cryptid SI and Chasing Night Shadows. Like us on Facebook and Instagram, drop us a line and tell us what you think and how we can improve. If we get something wrong, don't get mad at us, but rather educate us. If you would like to be a guest on our soon-to-relaunch radio show, we would love to have you. Or if you've had an encounter with some kind of cryptid like a Sasquatch, Dogman, or Skinwalker, or something else, or even a supernatural experience, and you'd like to tell us about it, we'd love to hear your story. If you'd like for us to read your account for you, then please drop us a line and we'll make that happen as well. I'm Elijah Henderson, and I look forward to bringing you another Nightmare Nugget very soon. See you next time.